XRP stop buying major crypto crisis on the horizon. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Glad to have you guys here. Crypto crisis may be ahead. Is XRP in that dust up? A lot of people are saying stop buying crypto right now for one major reason, and that has to do with CZ over at Binance versus Sam Bankman Freed over at FTX. And we're going to get into that today. There's a major dispute, major beef going on over at Twitter. And uh, a lot of people are saying the FTX may be insolvent. They may be the next domino to fall and going out of business. So crazy, crazy information. We're going to dive into that today. We will be checking out all that information over at Twitter. We'll be checking out the crypto news in the ecosystem. Today, we are down 4%. What goes up fast usually comes back down as well, right? So um, like we've been talking about, it's really interesting. Uh, we're going to dive into the weekly charts, daily charts, and the four-hour charts. Here we can see on the daily charts, our supply and demand zone for the Heikinashi charts gets us with a potential drop back to reality, 45.95. So 45 cents is potential target for XRP. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. None of the information that we talk about on this channel is financial advice. It's just financial entertainment and education. And we're just using the tools that are provided to us from TradingView. And this is what we're getting right now. So you may be wondering, well, how does that work? Well, the last down candle before this most recent up move, the moonshot candle from Friday, November 4th, that big 11% move, it left a major, major, major fair value gap. Let me go ahead and open this up. And let's see here. We'll cut those off and we'll show the fair value gap. Boom, right there. So you can see there is this fair value gap right here. Now, it did come in. So when this candle closed, by the way, when this candle closed on Friday, this whole entire area was a fair value gap all the way back down to the wick of this candle from Thursday. And that's where the top of our supply and demand zone is. And so there is potential that it comes back and fills that full fair value gap to that spot. And that's why we're talking about that there. Fair value gap. So here, let me show you. Let's use the replay tool here. And we'll go back to here. And we'll go ahead and hit the play button so you can see what I'm talking about. So as that candle turned on, it's a little bit fast there. Let me go and replay that again. Replay tool here. And let's go one at a time. So you can see here the candle from yesterday activated. All right, so it's Friday, Saturday's candle. And that started clearing out the fair value gap, but you can see it's all right here. And then today's candle, because it got to the 50% level of this, it basically just erased it from the charts altogether. But if we flip back to the four hours, you can see there's one there and there's even one right here, getting in deeper to the supply and demand zone. Again, this one is the daily. So let's go ahead and look at where is our four hour supply and demand zone candle. It's gonna be this guy right here and we'll put it right there. And you can see the fair value gap right at the tippity top of that. So very likely if this plays out the proper way, we could see price returning back down to this fair value gap and filling in to this supply and demand zone. And it has been quite the drop this last four hours. So right now we do have 24 minutes left in this four hour candle. And it was a massive, massive move to the downside and it continues to pour down. We can look at our hourly candles. You can see it's actually the last two hours specifically that have been driving down, but it is leaving upside targets for us on its way down too. So you can see your fair value gap, fair value gap back to the upside. We do have a blue line potential coming down and tapping this here, which is our 1100 exponential moving average, checking in with us right now at 45633 for prices that's coming up. And that also is going to coincide with a fair value gap as well. So <clears throat> as you guys know, on my segments on this channel, I do talk about the fair value gaps a lot because they work. We also see here that when price, the one hour candles, when the RSI dropped below the market baseline on our TDI RSI indicator, you can go find that for free on TradingView. 
you can see once that drop happened, traded sideways for a little bit. And then finally, it made the move down when the bearish divergence on the one hours kicked in. And it's been a drop ever since. These last two candles have been obviously the steepest drop. And that is not just for XRP. We see Bitcoin having a massive drop. We see Ethereum having a massive drop. We also see Shiba Inu having a massive drop. In fact, Shiba Inu came right back to its trend line. Interesting. All the way back from that June lows that we've been talking about following along on that trail as well. So getting back to XRP. We got some interesting stuff that we're going to be covering here today. You can see that it actually has fallen so fast on the one hour candles here. We turn this off, turn this off, and also this off. It has dropped outside of our Nadaria Watson envelope. Same thing happened over here when the move up happened. You can see this candle shot up extremely fast, that second one, and then it kept powering through. Right now, we're still dropping. Does the drop continue? We're going to see. It has pierced all the way through there. Sometimes you'll get a recovery. We've also dropped now significantly below <laughs> the 30 level on the RSI. Excuse me. We're all the way down to 22 on the oversold level on the one hour. So um, it's going down a little too fast on the one hours as well. We check here on the four hour chart. It's coming right down to the bottom of that zone. So we'll see that also on our four hour. Not great news. Four hour has also now converted back from bullish. As you can see, the green background on our RSI, it's gone now to the black background. Back under the price has RSI dropped below market baseline. And as we always talk about, whenever the reddish background filler on the RSI starts, that's bearish as well. So the reality is bearish kicked in all the way back here, Saturday, November 5th at 1 a.m. Pacific time. And it's been on a continued free fall since then. On this four-hour chart, it is continuing to drop. We could be recovering back to this 45-cent zone. And that would also bring us all the way down to the oversold territory on the RSI, down below the 30 level. So for me personally, when I'm doing trading, I do use the four-hour to dictate where I'm going. And then I'll execute on a smaller time frame. So that's why I use a lot of four hour here. If we look here on the daily, we still have some room to go down as well. And then after today, we very well could be switching to bearish again on the daily RSI. So it was really exciting. We did get that flip to the bullish side of things, but it was just one crazy random candle. Looks now to be a manipulation candle to get a lot of people fired up, jumping in the markets and then they just sold it off to all the retail in investors. So does this have anything to do with the FTX drama going on over at Twitter? So let's go find out what's happening. If you're ready to earn an extra $200 to $3,000 per day in passive income, just like the run guys do every single day, then like this video, subscribe to the channel, then click the link in the description of this video to learn the run guys number one way to start earning passive income online with crypto today. All right, guys. So here is CZ on Twitter, the owner of Binance, and this goes back a little bit deeper. So we're going to come on down and find the original post that I was wanting to show you guys here. All right, and here it is. This came out this morning. This is the first thing that I read when I jumped onto Twitter and I was like, holy moly, this is pretty dangerous stuff. Okay. So as part of Binance's exit strategy from FTX, meaning they're basically selling all of their crypto that they own of FTX, from their FTX equity from last year, Binance received roughly $2.1 billion USD equivalent in cash, BUSD and FTT. So the FTT token, due to recent revelations that have come to light, we have decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on our books. Now we have not gotten what these recent revelations are. He did not state those specifically but there is talk behind the scenes of what that could be, and I will bring that up as well. We will try to do so in a way that minimizes market impact due to market conditions and limited liquidity. We expect this will take a few months to complete. So they're going to continue selling off their $2 billion 
worth of FTT tokens, okay? And they're trying to get out as soon as possible. But as he says here, limited liquidity. That is something that stood out to me, meaning that like if he wanted to sell $2 billion worth of FTT, they wouldn't be able to basically is what he's saying there. There's not enough. And that's the insolvency issue we're going to talk about. Binance always encourages collaboration between industry players regarding any speculation as to whether this is a move against a competitor. It is not. So he's not doing this to try and bankrupt FTX, which FTX did do to Voyager and several other players in the industry that have recently gone bankrupt. But our industry is in its nascency. And every time a project publicly fails, it hurts every user and every platform. So what if you had $2.1 billion worth of FTX tokens, FTT is the token name, and then they went out of business and you lost $2 billion. You would look really bad. So he's saying that right there. Every time a project publicly fails, it hurts every user, every platform. So we typically hold tokens for the long term, and we have held on to this token for this long. We stay transparent with our actions is the final tweet of that. Now, because of this that came out, Caroline from FTX sent out a tweet as well saying, hey, CZ Binance, if you're looking to minimize the market impact, because he said, we don't want to hurt the market. We already know it's going to selling this much token. Well, they're offering to buy it right now for $22 a token. If we look at the price of where FTT is right now on the daily. So when that tweet came out, by the way, that tweet was at 8.03 a.m. So let's go to our one hour charts here. Let's go back to 8.03 AM, which would have been here. And at that time, it was trading at or around 22 cents anyway. Okay. So at or around 22 cents. Now, what you'll notice here, which is kind of strange as well, look at this crazy situation, obviously manipulation of the market because of the bad news, good news, whatever came out, craziness. But if you look at FTX token, FTT, and you look at the bands here, this is the volatility bands of how much volatility is buying and selling going on, okay, of FTT. And then let's say we look at Bitcoin. Look at the difference in those bands. And then let's say we look at, for example, Ethereum. There's lots and lots of room in those bands. Well, there's not here. It's very tight. The liquidity is not there, right? So there's not a lot of trading volume going on regardless until right here there was some massive massive volume so after this was said this morning price did pump a little bit and since then it has started to come back down currently trading at $22.29 so over here Caroline who works for FTT is trying to buy it all up as soon as possible and get it off the market and they'll buy it all they said so this could alleviate the problem. And here's a lot more research that we're going to cover on this whole entire situation. So is Alameda Research insolvent, meaning are they bankrupt? That's the company that Sam Bankman-Fried owns along with FTX, side-by-side, -side, basically sister companies. And according to a recent leak, the firm's finances rely on the same scheme that destroyed Celsius Network. Will it work out differently for Sam Bankman-Fried? A recent report from Coindesk showed the Alameda balance sheet is dominated by holdings of their own token, FTX. An additional undisclosed amount was held in other tokens from Sam Bankman Fried's other projects. Total assets they have is $14.6 billion. So the company has that on its balance sheet. This is comprised of $5.8 billion of their own FTT tokens, $1.2 billion of Solana, 3.37 billion in unidentified crypto held, 2 billion in investments and equity securities. And this leaves roughly $2.2 billion in assets. According to our sources, hundreds of millions of dollars of the remaining assets are compromised by Alameda's holdings in Serum, Oxygen, and FIDA tokens, all of which are from other Sam Bankman free projects. So basically the entire value of FTX is all tokens that Sam Bankman-Fried created and sold. Total liabilities, $8 billion. 
So that means that they have roughly $2 billion in assets. That means they could sell all of their assets and they would get $2.2 billion. Liabilities, meaning things that they owe money on, is $8 billion, of which $7.4 billion is loans with another $292 million worth of the FTT token owed. The remainder is unidentified by the Coindesk article. So some of you guys may be re like listening to this and being like, well, I hold XRP. I don't really care about this. Well, this is big, big news. So if you guys remember when Terra Luna went bankrupt, right, their system failed because of a different reason, but it failed because they didn't actually hold as many Bitcoin as they said they had that would have covered the amount of the price going down, right? So when they were supposed to algorithmically put Bitcoin into the system to pump the UST price back up, they didn't have enough Bitcoin to do it. And in fact, it was FTX that was caught shorting the system. FTX was purposely trying to put them out of business when they found the compromised situation. So one of two things are going to happen here. Either someone's going to come in and force the price to continue to drive down or Sam Bankman Freed, who has backing by a lot of the, you know, the United States government actually is trying to hold him up. He's the one that's fighting for all of the different regulations that he wants only his company to benefit from. So does he have enough pull and leverage with the government behind the scenes? We don't know. We're going to watch this play out and see what happens. Personally, I don't care for Sam Bankman Freed. I think he's really, really bad for the industry because of the crap stuff he pulls. And it's funny when like a lot of people write fluff pieces on him. He's the white knight of crypto and this, that, and the other. But I don't want to see him going out of business because that could tank the market. This, this could be the next black swan event. So we had Terra Luna, right? Then you have Voyager and then you had Celsius. And then this one could be it as well. So not exciting. So the firm's solvency rests on crypto tokens issued by related parties. So this might sound familiar because it's the same model that Celsius Network and many other crypto firms to spend billions of dollars in assets out of thin air. We call this the flywheel scheme. And this is what happens. They create a token. You pump the token price up real high. Mark the gains on the balance sheet. So it looks like your company's pumping and it's doing well. Show the gains to investors. Hey, look at how much money we made this year. Raise cash through equity sales and loans. So you have people start to back you, giving you cash flow. And then you create another token. You pump that to, and you just keep on doing that around in circles, which is what Celsius was doing. And then the flywheel schemes enable firms to mark their illiquid token holdings, meaning the tokens they can't sell. So remember, Binance wants to sell $2 billion worth of FTT tokens but due to liquidity reasons, they can't because it's illiquid. There's not enough actual cash backing it. It's kind of like the Federal Reserve used to be backed by the U.S. or by the by gold standard, right? Now there is no gold backing anything. It's just all thin air. Well, this is what's going on with FTT. FTT token is out of thin air. They created the token and they said it has value. But if you try to sell all of your FTX token and you have $100 million, you have $2 billion worth, it would literally suck every cent of liquidity out of the market, which is what's crazy. Throw in a little market manipulation and we can generate billions in assets. At least on paper, in reality, these tokens cannot be monetized because the markets are so, so distorted. Celsius token was the great example because Celsius bought tens of millions of dollars of their own token to keep the price high because then you have... Like if, if, if you have a token you just created, market cap's $1 million, you go out and raise $10 million, well, you could pump it into the coin by buying your own coin. It inflates the price and it looks like you have a bunch of money, but reality, that's investors' money that you have to pay back to the investors eventually, enabling them to score $750 million in investments. Celsius couldn't afford to keep buying the token, the price collapsed. The flywheel spun in reverse. Shredding the balance sheet, creditors are stuck with hundreds of millions of dollars in Celsius tokens. Also, a lot of you guys were part of Celsius probably. Uh, and then, I mean, I can't tell you how many people that I know that are stuck with Luna tokens still, right? Hoping that one day it'll go back up and pump to the moon again. Selling even a small fraction will crash the market to zero. 
Alameda finds themselves in the same position. They hold more FTT token on their balance sheet than tokens currently in circulation, according to market aggregators. So FTT has almost no organic demand with a fraction of the volume and the active addresses as comparable crypto tokens like Link. FTT's transfer activity through FTX is just a big circle through wallets controlled by Alameda Research. So they just buy and sell to themselves over and over, and it looks like there's a bunch of trading volume going on. And remember, this is how Sam Bankman-Fried got rich anyway. He was doing arbitrage of Bitcoin. He was literally flying around the world, buying Bitcoin in Asia, going back to America and selling it, going here, there, everywhere. And instead of, so that it takes a lot of work to do all that travel and make all that money, right? But what if you could just do your own coin and do the same thing? Our sources and research indicate that Alameda also holds several hundred million dollars worth of related crypto tokens, SRM, Oxy, FIDA, and MAPS, all minimally active Sam Bankman free projects for from 2021. Like FTT, these positions exceed the circulating market cap of the tokens. Go take a look at the trading volumes for these tokens. It's worth a laugh. All of this to say that if Coindesk and our analysis are correct, Alameda Research net equity is exceeded by the unrealizable value as they describe FTT, Serum, Oxy, Maps, and FIDA. Their financial situation is precarious to say the least. So in reality, they could save themselves. They just need to raise some money, right? So this doesn't even factor in the likely overvalued equity investments, Solana and other crypto assets on their balance sheet. And what's weird is they hold like zero, not zero, I can't say that. They hold very little Bitcoin and they hold very little Ethereum. All like the top blue chip tokens, they hold none, barely, okay? So one has to wonder, who does Alameda Research owe $7.4 billion to and how are they going to pay them back? And here's another person, Duo9, tweeted out, turns out FTX CEO has billions in assets under Alameda Research consisting of FTT tokens issued by his other business, FTX Exchange. Print $3 billion worth of FTT tokens from nothing, thin air, because he made them, right? When you create a token, you can say how much you want in circulation, and then you go out and sell them. Send them to Alameda as collateral. So now Alameda has all this money, and you can borrow, you can get loans against the coins you hold if they hold value, which is kind of like Bitcoin, right? You can get loans against Bitcoin because people trust Bitcoin for the future, and then you get free cash. And then you have this guy right here, crypto. This just got posted at 3.06 p.m. from Rand Nuanner. I don't even know the guy, but I guess because I searched this topic, it's feeding into my Twitter, but get your funds out of FTX. This is financial advice. I'm not giving financial advice, by the way, but people are having problems with drawing. Um, you are late about eight hours. FTT added to my short position. Let's see here, artist speculation, delete ran. All right, and then you got this guy here posting this funny video, but also interesting. His name is Bankman, and he's supporting crypto. Uh, Bankman, the banks, crypto is to get away from the banks, but he wants to become the bank for crypto. Sam Bankman Freed is known for that. So check this funny video out here. How can you support a guy whose middle name is Bank? Do you see what's going on? He wants to OTC by the entire industry. That's why I made DBI, to prevent massive centralized corporate takeovers. This is what I think of the bank man. All right, and then this is the latest tweet or the second to latest tweet. I'll show you the latest one from CZ. Liquidating our FTT is just post-exit risk management. Learning from Luna, we gave support before, but we wouldn't pretend to make love for after divorce. We are not assisting anyone but we won't support people who lobby against other industry players behind their backs onwards. And then as part of our exit strategy, this person right here, Crypto King asked, if you don't mind me asking, if the tokens weren't locked, why did you wait until now to sell issue with FTX or liquidity providing during the bear? He said, not locked. We usually just hold. It removes any doubt that we would attack a competitor, not financially sensible. We want the industry to grow together, but there's a limit to hold, LOL. 
If you're ready to earn an extra two hundred to three thousand dollars per day in passive income, just like the Run Guys do every single day, then like this video, subscribe to the channel, then click the link in the description of this video to learn the Run Guys' number one way to start earning passive income online with crypto today. So this is a very fluid situation right now <laughs> on the hourly. It's showing bullish for the moment, even though price is dropping a little bit. But once once this Drops below the RSI, drops below market baseline. We go bearish. Let's look at the four hour. Four hour is bearish, even though it had this crazy weird spike bounce. That must have been them loading more money into the coffers. Sam Bankman Freed, uh, you got your daily. Daily is down. Daily is bearish. In fact, it switched bearish as of yesterday. Today continued on. The new candle has just started, though, and that one has a little slice of green to it which is interesting uh speaking of daily charts let's go back now xrp has a little slice of green here as well hey good news by the way look at this we have a fair value gap to the upside so we may see some daily movement to the upside to cover all that we'll find out shortly but as you can see price did slice down under showing bearish now on the daily which will be interesting to continue watching this is also now a new weekly candle Last week had a massive pump, major breakdown afterwards. So far, the little micro to the upside, it's not even 1%, it's at 0.13, but it is showing green. So at least we have that. Now jumping over to the Ethereum charts. So Ethereum, same scenario here. It does have a big fair value gap because when price goes up or down, it leaves this here. And it needs to go back and fill those imbalances, which that would bring us all the way back up to our four-hour supply and demand zone currently sitting at 16,000 or 16,000, 1,615. So 1,615. However, if it continues to drop and it falls below this support line here to the downside of 1,544, drops all the way below that 1,524, it could be coming to fill our lower side fair value gap we've been talking about here. The top side of that is at 1457 and the bottom of that is all the way down at 13 1375 ish so we'll continue to monitor and track that make sure you subscribe so you can be here along with us on that journey bitcoin same scenario lots of daily fair value gaps to the downside definitely more bullish on bitcoin than the ethereum charts and uh you know right now xrp is looking bearish unfortunately but we can see that right there. And then let's go to our other ETH chart here. We already got that taken care of. So there is a support level here at 1420. 1420 price could be coming back to for a support. And that also fills the 50% level of that fair value gap there. How about a tiny look at Shiba Inu as well? Shiba Inu is still holding that trend line so strong. I mean, it's obviously it had a nice ginormous pump, filled a fair value gap sitting up here at quad zero one five and then immediately retrace it's trying it's trying it's trying not really having much volume up there rsi continuing to drop here so we'll continue tracking and monitoring that as well